Oh hey, welcome to another edition of Hand Laid Tracks and 3D Printed Trains with Sukratis. Today we're taking a second look at Ziha. This time we're going to put it in the middle of a print. So I started building a little wood pulp carrier. It's a 40 foot N scale model car. It uses various color changes but mostly with the layers. And it has a little wood rack in the middle with a spline in the middle to help it print better. And I thought, well that black isn't very appealing. Maybe I could make it white, but I don't have a bamboo printer, just have a regular Creality CR10 V3. What do you do? Z hop! So I modified the design and took the piece out of the middle, turned it into a separate object. So this is basically three objects printed in order one, two, and three. The first object is the bottom in black, the second is the tan colored or cream colored middle, which matches the top of the car. And then the third object is the entire spikes for the rest of it. It gets a little confusing, but I was asked to get a more in-depth discussion about how to do it in some of the other comments on the original one, because the first Z-Hop video is about how to do a Z-Hop on the first layer. This prints this way, and you can see the Z-Hop gives you a nice flat layer, and basically the Z-Hop causes the printer head to bounce over top the previous print. That way you can print the yellow and then get inside of it for the red or the black or the, or the copper or whatnot, and not just knock the other things out of the way. And Z-Hop basically is a vertical retraction. So every time the printer does a retract, the printer will hit a move up. I'm leaving 0.6 millimeters for a vertical height of my maximum vertical print height. So I'm doing a Z-Hop of 0.8. So it's a little bit thicker. And in fact, I now do a 0.2 Z-Hop on everything that avoids that drag line. If you do a flat surface, you end up with a, a line dragging through your final print. Add just a little bit, at least 0.1 millimeter uh, vertical extension or Z-hop, and that'll eliminate that for as well. But basically, I did the whole thing originally with SketchUp, and let's take a look at the process, shall we? So I start with basically, I do everything in SketchUp. It's in SketchUp Make 2017. It's free, it's old, it works. I broke the object into three different objects, the bottom, uh, the first is to the cream color, and then the third, which is the, the, the spikes. And this started basically as a finished object, and then I sort of manipulated it to create it into three different sections. And you can see the bottom section prints, like I said, first it's been black, and then that little cream section is a small tiny print on top of that. And then you have to do color changing between each one of them. And the essence of the Z-Hop is you add both the Z-Hop and the color change to the three different programs. And I have a little key, that rectangle around it is a key shape. That way when you add them one at a time into the slicer, in this case Simplicity 3D, that key shape puts them all in the exact same place. And as you can see, they fall into place at that point. And I basically have three versions of a Z-Hop uh, slicing code setup, a preset. The first has a, a color change at the end, but it does not need a Z-Hop because there's no Z-Hopping going on. The second one has both Z-Hop and a color change, and the third one just has Z-Hop because it doesn't have to change the color at the end of the, of the print. And with Simplicity 3D, you can select your models by which of the processors you're going to use to print. So since there's three different models in the same place and three different print processes, I just assign the first to number one, second, the middle to number two, and the last to number three. And again, these are three separate G codes of separate STL files and you slice them one at a time and you print them one at a time and you can see that's the print from the first one it's a very quick print just about seven minutes I think and the second one's even quicker a mere minute and these are being done at 0.3 millimeter layer heights and it lasts a full hour uh, and again you do a quick color change in between each one of them and I add the color change into the script as well uh, inside the extruder panel, again this is Simplicity 3D, you have the retract vertical height, the vertical lift, I set that to 0.8 because my verticals are 0.6. Now I'm going to end up doing two of them and end up being a 1.2 millimeter height, but that's because I'm offsetting with double and <laughs> double uh, Z-hops. The ending is where you put the change filament code, you can see the code there, basically the M600 is the change filament code, and once the, uh, this is the printing of the second object. Uh, we've already done the first to change filament code after that first object and then very quickly the second one is a very very short little print 
it's not really adding much to it. In the end, the object, the color is even covered with a load. Sometimes with 3D printing, you do it because you can. Again, I was asked how to give some more detail about how this whole thing is done. And this is the whole, the whole process of doing a, of a Z hop. This is a Z hop in the middle, which is, you know, I hadn't even really thought of it, but I realized that it was a way I could do it. And once you end that first color is over, it has an automatic color change the way I'm doing it at the end of it. And it automatically kicks out the filament, put in the filament for the third, which again is going back to black in this case. And also, if you're doing from black to white, I purged three or four or even five times to get the black out because the lighter color will definitely bleed black for a while if you don't purge the, the, a lot of the lighter color to get rid of it. I also pull the filament a little bit to one side. It seems to get it off the edge of the nozzle as well. But once the uh, third print starts, that's basically you're done having to pay any more attention to this. And you can see that it's z-hopping over the white at this point and this is now the second layer and now we're printing on top of the whole thing and the white is being encased within it. It makes it a little bit sturdier, of a more sturdy print. Again, it, it's a way of getting color where there's no other way to do it. I mean, you can get a bamboo or you can just simply use Z-Hop and you can see it prints directly over the previous layer and it's sandwiched in nice and clean. It's a nice little way to end up with a, a print, like I say. And in the end, you know, this is nicer looking, you know, than that. So now for me at this point, I'm getting a lot of strings off this thing, which is unfortunate. Now I'm going to start playing with some of my retraction distance, etc. But I found that hitting it with a little bit of a torch real fast cleans them up pretty darn quickly. Hopefully not too much toxic in the air, but just a little bit of flame and cleans all the hairs off real fast. It's not something I'm going to print too many of, so in the end, at this point, I'm happy with it. I only printed about five or six of them. Move on to more and different cars. These are available on Colts too, by the way. And so the Z-Hop just gives you a lot more options to how you can set things up, how you can design things, and how you can color things. And, you know, if you find something that you don't like, like in my case, I didn't like that black in the middle of the design, so I changed it. And that's a nice thing. And here's the... Uh, this is a, again, design is a nice thing with uh, with design. You can make things as you like, and in the end, they, they fit together quite nicely. And uh, the ends slip in there quite cleanly. This is an unclean print. For a while, I was cleaning it up again and again, but now I uh, I got it nice enough where they slip right in there quite, well, quite pleasingly. And this, again, I really like the way this thing snaps together. It was enough of an excuse to make another one just to have it snap in one more time. Just click, 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 click. <laughs> I love design. Design is such a great thing. If you don't design with a 3D printer, you're missing half the joy of it. I definitely suggest. I do SketchUp. Like I say, it's an old SketchUp Make 2017, but the program still works perfectly well for me. And for these particular things, if you're interested in it, it's an N-scale model train. I use MicroTrain couplers on them, and I 3D printed the entire layout. You can see it running uh, with my COVID lockdown project. And they work really great with microtrans couplers. They're all medium shank. The pins slip into the bottom of the couplers and uh, made some loads as well. In this case, this is a log load. And uh, I like to use a log load because it's easy to put the couplers in because it gives it a nice support. You know, there's always tricks to everything. For me, these couplers were a real pain to get to get uh, the little pins into them, but I found that by putting it on the tip of a multimeter probe, I can get the pins inside the couplers and then use that same probe and more or less put it over the hole, wiggle push it down, and the thing slides right into the hole. Works really good. I have really had no problems with the microtrange couplers so far. The, uh, one of the two pins, the bigger the small one, always fits so far. And you can see it works pretty nice. I designed everything on the 3D printer. As far as being the two foot rule, two foot away, for me it looks really good, really happy with it, pleased with the results. So basically to use Z-Hop, you want to break your object into different colored zones. In this case, every one of the colors is its own object. Or in this case, the three objects are sort of stacked together. The colors are one object, but the black itself is also in two objects, the bottom half and the top half. 
But I use a key year at it, so they slice easy in the slicer program, and then a numbering system, so I basically print in order, one, two, three, four, etc. In this case, I think this had six or seven. In this case, only the three. And that's how you can do Z-Hop in the middle of a print. It works the same at the, on the base, except the objects would be on one level. And you can also do them on the top. And I'll do another video on how to do Z-Hop on the top layer, top layer next. Thanks for watching. Handlay Tracks doesn't have a theme song, doesn't have a theme song, doesn't have a theme song. Handlay Tracks still doesn't have a theme song, doesn't have a theme song still. Handlay tracks still doesn't have a theme song, doesn't have a theme song, doesn't have a theme song. Handlay tracks it still doesn't have a theme song.